Hey guys, this is part 2 for October-November 2024, paper 41. Question 6. A potential divider is made by connecting a light-dependent resistor and a thermistor in series. Figure 6.1 shows the potential divider, a voltmeter, and a direct current DC power supply connected into a circuit. The voltmeter measures the potential difference across the LDR. So this is the LDR, this is the thermistor, and a voltmeter placed across the component. Question A. Define potential difference. As for the definition, you can easily find them in your syllabus. Under chapter 4, you would see that potential difference is defined as the work done by a unit charge passing through a component. Question B. The electromotive force EMF of the supply is E. So they're just telling us that the value of the EMF here is E, which is an unknown value. And describe how the potential difference across the thermistor can be determined using the reading on the voltmeter. Now you have to know that for a series circuit, the current that flows across the circuit is always going to be the same. Whereas for voltage, it will split. For instance, if the power supply was 10 voltage, and if you've got two components of the same resistance, the current will split equally of 5 voltage for each of them. And as for parallel, it would be the opposite of a series circuit. So in order to find the voltage of the thermistor, we're going to take the total voltage, which is E, and we're going to take away or minus the voltage of the LDR in order to get the voltage of the thermistor. So E take away the voltmeter reading of LDR will give us the potential difference across the thermistor. Next, question C. The resistance of the LDR decreases and the resistance of the thermistor increases. Part 1. State what has happened to the light intensity on the LDR and the temperature of the thermistor. Alright, in your syllabus, you will come across four types of resistor. A fixed resistor, variable resistor, a thermistor and light-dependent resistor. A standard resistor have a fixed resistance and variable resistors can have their resistance changed. Next, a thermistor is technically a variable resistor, but it changes according to heat. When the temperature increases, its resistance decreases. When its temperature decreases, its resistance increases. And lastly, we've got a light-depending resistance, which is also a variable resistor, but it changes according to light. When light intensity increases, the resistance decreases, and vice versa. Now remember that light-dependent resistor receives light and not emit light. So if the resistance of the LDR has decreased, this means that the light intensity has increased. And if the resistance of the thermistor has increased, this means that the temperature has decreased. Next question part 2. Explain what happens to the reading on the voltmeter. So the resistance of the LDR decreases and the resistance of the thermistor increases. According to the formula of potential divider, if the resistance has decreased, then it will have a smaller proportion of the total resistance, which then will be a smaller proportion of the EMF. Next, question 7. A solid bar is inside a copper solenoid. Figure 7.1 shows that the copper solenoid is connected in series with the battery and a variable resistor. The device shown in figure 7.1 is an electromagnet. Remember that a simple electromagnet is made by coiling wire around a soft metal core. Question A suggests a suitable material for the bar. A suitable material would be a soft iron as it is a temporary magnet and it can lose magnetism easily. Next question, the right-hand end of the bar is the south pole. Figure 7.2 shows the bar viewed from above. On figure 7.2, draw at least six field lines to show the pattern and direction of the magnetic field surrounding the bar. Remember that magnetic field line always travels out of the north pole and enters the south pole. So these are what their six lines should look like. Remember that you should not have any lines that overlap each other. Next, part 2. The resistance of the variable resistor increases. Explain what happens to the magnetic field surrounding the bar and state how the pattern of field lines that represent the field changes. According to Ohm's law, resistance and current are inversely proportional. It means that if resistance increases, then your current will decrease. And the flow of current can affect the magnetic field strength. The lower the current, the lower the magnetic field strength. 
Now we're going to have to state how the pattern of field lines that represent the field changes. If the magnetic field strength decreases, then we can show it in a way that the field lines will tend to get further away from each other. If they are closer to each other, it means that they have a very strong magnetic field. So you can say that as for the pattern, the field lines will appear further from each other. Next question C. A square coil of many turns is placed close to the bar. Figure 7.3 shows the plane of the square coil, this one, parallel to the flat circular surface at the right hand of the bar. Okay. And the resistance of the variable resistor is alternately increased and decreased. Explain what happens in the wires of the square coil. As discussed previously, if the resistance increases, then your current will decrease. And if the resistance decreases, then your current will increase. The higher the current, the higher its magnetic field. The lower the current, the lower its magnetic field. So this means that if we are changing the resistance, we will be changing the current flow through the solenoid. And if the current flow through the solenoid changes, then the magnetic field changes as well. So if the magnetic field in the copper solenoid changes, then the square coil that is being placed near the solenoid will experience a changing magnetic flux. And this changing magnetic flux will now induce electromotive force in the square coil. This induced EMF is what drives a current in the square coil if this forms a closed circuit. So as what happens in the wires, we can just mention that the square coil will experience a changing in magnetic flux which then induces electromotive force. Next, question 8. The nuclide notation for the radioactive isotope carbon-14 is 14,6 carbon. The number at the top here represents the nucleon number, which is the total of protons and neutrons added up together. And the number at the bottom here represents the proton number in this atom. Now question part A, using the symbol shown in figure 8.1, draw a diagram to show the number of electrons, neutrons and protons in a neutral atom of carbon-14. So we have got 6 protons. Since this is a neutral atom, we will also have the same number of electrons, which are 6. And as for the neutrons, we will take the total nucleon number minus the proton number to get the neutron number. Your proton and neutron will be placed in the nucleus and electrons will be placed on the shell. Remember that the first shell can only hold a maximum of 2 electrons and since we have a total of 6 electrons, the rest of the 4 electrons will be placed on the second shell. Next, question B. Describe how the composition of a neutral atom of carbon-14 is different from the composition of a neutral atom of nitrogen-14. There are 6 protons in carbon and 7 protons in nitrogen, 8 neutrons in carbon and 7 neutrons in nitrogen. So it's different in a way that there is an extra proton in nitrogen and there is one extra neutron in carbon. Next, question C. Carbon-14 decays by beta emission. Part 1. State the name of a particle that is identical to beta particle. So beta particle has a charge of negative 1 which is similar as an electron. Part 2. Describe the change that takes place in carbon-14 as beta particle is emitted. I have explained radioactive decay in Unit 5 Nuclear Physics. During the emission of beta particle, a neutron will turn into proton and electron and the proton will remain in the nucleus and you will have a fast moving electron which is beta particle emitted. During this decay, the mass number will remain unchanged but the proton number on the other hand will increase by 1. Since you are only being given with one mark, you can mention that a neutron will change into a proton and electron. Question part D. The half-life of a carbon is 5,700 years. A very old object is made of wood. It contains 1.2 times 10 to the power of 11 atoms of carbon-14. When it was manufactured, it contained 9.6 times 10 to the power of 11. Determine the time that has passed since it was manufactured. So originally, we have 9 times 6 to the power of 11 atoms and it has decayed until we are only remain with 1.2. So let's see how many times does it decay to arrive to this number. So from 9.6 to become 1.2, it has decayed into half once, twice, and three times. Each time it becomes half, it takes 5,700 years. So the amount of time taken from 9.6 to become 1.2 
would be 5,700 multiplied by 3. So the years have passed was 17,000 years. The Milky Way is the galaxy in which the solar system is located. State what a galaxy is. So again, you can find this in your course syllabus under 6.2. It has been stated that galaxies are made up of many billion of stars. Next question B. The Milky Way has a diameter that is approximately equal to 100,000 light years. Determine this distance in kilometers. So light years is a measurement of distance and what we're going to do here is just a unit conversion from light years to kilometers. You must know that one light year is equal to 9.5 times 10 to the power of 15 meters. So 100,000 light years means that 1 light year by 100,000. So 100,000 have 5 zeros. We're just going to add 5 to our power of, giving us 9.5 times 10 to the power of 20 meters. However, we are required to change our answers into kilometers. In order to do that, we're just going to divide our answers by 1,000. We've got 3 zeros in 1,000, so we will just take away 3 to our power of giving us 9.5 times 10 to the power of 17 kilometers. Question part C. Astronomers determine the speed and distance from the Earth of a far galaxy that is moving away from the Earth. Part 1. State one observation that allows the speed at which a galaxy is moving away to be determined. If you watch my tutorial video on Unit 6 Space Physics, you would know what is redshift. Redshift is the increase in the observed wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted from a receding star. So this is one of the evidence whereby the universe is expanding. So the observation that tells us that a galaxy is moving away from Earth is the fact that there is an increase in the observed wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted. Next part 2. State one different observation that is used to determine the distance to a far galaxy. So we have learned how to measure galactic speed. This is the formula for it. And in order to measure the galactic distance, which is for galaxy, it can be determined by the brightness of a supernova. So the brightness of supernova tells us the distance for a galaxy. Next part 3. State how the speeds of a galaxy and their distances from the Earth are related. So according to Hubble law, it says that the further away a star is from Earth or the further away a galaxy is from Earth, the faster it is moving away from us. Or in simple words, you could just simply say that the speed and distance are directly proportional. Next, part 4. The best estimate for Hubble constant is 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 18 per second. Use this value to calculate an estimate for the age of the universe. So to calculate the age of the universe, it is 1 over Hubble constant, which is 1 over 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 18 per second, giving us a value of 4.5 times 10 to the power of 17. And the unit is second. Alright, that's all for the video. For the next video, I will be discussing Physics Paper 4.2 from October-November 2024. Thank you for watching. And if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, like and comment. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day.